Istanbul City Guide Old Istanbul is the crowded streets of the Grand Bazaar, magnificent mosques, hammams, bathhouses, and grand palaces of the Ottoman Empire. Headscarved women walk down the cobbled lanes and men smoke apple tobacco from a nargaila, water pipe, to a soundtrack of the Musin's call to prayer. New Istanbul was voted 2007 design capital by Wallpaper magazine. Its boutiques selling one-offs by globally recognized Turkish designers and the Sihinger District's clubs, bars and restaurants rival Soho. The Istanbul Modern showcases Turkey's contemporary art. In Istanbul both these worlds coexist. It's a vital, ever-changing city, charged with energy, creativity and commerce. Other cities claim to be at the crossroads of Europe and Asia, but only Istanbul can legitimately claim to straddle both continents. Split by the Bosphorus the western bank of the city is in Europe whilst the eastern side is in Asia. Istanbul is surrounded on three sides by water, as well as the Bosphorus there is the Sea of Marmara to the south of the city, and a narrow inlet known as the Golden Horn splits the European side. Istanbul is one of the biggest cities in Europe, home to a population of approximately 12 million. Its numbers are swelled daily by newcomers from the provinces, traveling to the city for work. Turkey has a very young population, the average age is 29. The average age in Istanbul is even younger at 23 and some unofficial sources put it at 16. It's also a university city, with over 150,000 students attending the three big universities and dozens of colleges. Since 1923 Ankara has been the capital of Turkey, but Istanbul has always been and continues to be the financial and commercial capital. The country's economy is one of the fastest growing in the world and the city has quadrupled in size over the last few decades. History Byzantium Constantinople Istanbul The names which the city has been called during its 28 centuries of existence. Relics from all these periods still exist in Istanbul. During the Constantinople era which began in 330 AD, many stunning palaces, fountains and monumental churches were constructed. The city was the first Christian capital of the Eastern Roman Empire and over 900 years grew to become the wealthiest most splendid city in Europe, whilst Paris and London were still squalid towns. In 1453 Ottoman Sultan Mehmed XI brought an end to Constantinople, bringing Islam to the city, changing churches into mosques and renaming the city Istanbul. Mehmet the Conqueror was responsible for the Topaki Palace and the Grand Bazaar and other Grand Mosques. The Ottoman Empire reached its zenith under Sultanate of Suleiman the Magnificent 1522 66. 666 BC Greek King Byzas establishes Byzantium. 179 BC Byzantium becomes part of the Roman Empire. 330 AD Roman Emperor Constantine builds his new capital in the city and renames it Constantinople. 1453 Ottoman Turks conquer Constantinople and name it Istanbul. 1914 Ottoman Empire sides with Germany and Austria-Hungary during World War I. 1923 The Independent Republic of Turkey is established, with a new capital in Ankara. Although over 95% of the population are Muslim, Istanbul has a long history of tolerance and multiculturalism with Jewish and Christian traditions present in the city. Islamic fundamentalists targeted the city in 2003 with Al-Qaeda bombs aimed at Jewish synagogues, the British consulate and HSBC bank, killing 78 people. In 2005 Turkey entered formal talks to become a member of the European Union but whilst Turkey's dispute with Greece over Cyprus remains unresolved, many believe it can't happen. Neighborhood Districts European Side Sultanahmet Sultanahmet is the district that all tourists head for. This is ancient Istanbul with all the sightseeing heavyweights packed together with must-see mosques, palaces and the Grand Bazaar. Compact and relatively traffic-free compared to the rest of the city and easy to navigate around on foot. Emenonu and Kagalolu Emenonu is the transport hub of Istanbul. Kagalogu is a warren of trade shops. Tunnel and Karakoy Karakoy houses the city's docks and harbor. Steep alleyways and the Genoese Galata Tower is the area's towering landmark. Karakoy is the location for the Istanbul Modern Contemporary Art Museum. Tunnel takes its name from the tunnel that runs down to the sea from Istikul Jadesi, Independence Avenue, the first municipal underground in Europe and still in operation. Beolu and Taksim the city's heartland. Istikul Jadesi, Independence Avenue, is a mile-long pedestrianized grand boulevard cutting through Beolu. An ancient-looking tram runs the length of Istikul Jadesi. 
lined with 19th century former palaces and embassies which are now home to high street brands. The avenue is just as busy at night with pavement bars and restaurants serving the tourists. It's said that up to a million people walk up or down Istiklal Jadesi every day. The streets off Istiklal Jadesi retain their bohemian past and are home to many interesting independent shops, cafes, bars, restaurants and clubs. Taksim Square is at the heart of modern Istanbul but it's large, busy and on the whole unappealing. Crossing the road here requires pedestrians take their life in their hands as traffic comes from every direction and doesn't always stop at the traffic lights. Sihinger and Kukurkuma bohemian area of the city, more Soho than Istanbul. The fashionistas have moved in on the area and it's now riding high on a property boom. Despite this the area has a friendly small town vibe and a thriving cafe society. Nissan Tasi and Maka Nissan Tasi is the upscale, upmarket, expensive area of town. Designer and luxury boutiques, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Armani etc. Smart apartment blogs, good restaurants and people watching cafes. Abdi Ipekchi Jadesi is a leafier version of Bond Street. The area doesn't attract many tourists, rather it's Istanbul's super rich who come to shop. Ordekoy and Besiktas Besiktas is the grandeur of these two Bosphorus-based suburbs, with a concentration of shoreline Ottoman palaces and pavilions. In the summer the waterfront of Ordekoy becomes party central, crowded with locals enjoying the bars, restaurants and super clubbing venues. Levant and Etyler the financial heartland, lined with corporate skyscrapers and large financial institutions. Wealthy, with imposing villas glimpsed behind security fencing. Levant is the stomping ground of Istanbul's rich and famous. This is the location of Turkey's largest shopping mall, the Akmerki, which was named best shopping center in Europe in the mid-90s. Asian side, Uskuder and Katakoy residential suburbs for those who work mainly on the European side, and make the daily commute by ferry across the Bosphorus. Not many tourists visit but locals flock to the bazaar in Katakoy and to one of the city's best street markets on Kustili Sokak on Tuesdays for food and clothes, and on Sundays for the flea market. The Big Sites The top five are all in Sultanahmet, the ancient quarter of Istanbul. Hagia Sophia, also known as Hagia Sophia, the Church of the Divine Wisdom, this originally Christian basilica, is Istanbul's finest site. Vast interior, stunning mosaics and a towering dome. The present building is the third to stand on the site. The first was built in AD 360 during the reign of Constantius, but after flood and earthquake damage it was rebuilt many times until this final structure was completed in 537. For a thousand years this was the largest building in the world. When Ottoman Mehmet II conquered the city in 1453 his first act was to declare Hagia Sophia a mosque. Apart from removing some of the marble crosses and whitewashing the mosaic icons he left the church as it was. The four Islamic minarets which now stand at the corners were added after the Turkish conquest. Topkapi Palace. For 400 years this pavilion palace was the residence of the Ottoman sultans who were the most powerful empire rulers in the world. Built by Mehmet the Conqueror shortly after his conquest in 1453, both as his command center and as his indulgent home. The palace is a city within a city consisting of interconnecting courts and between 5,000 and 7,000 people worked and lived inside to serve the Sultan household. The harem alone had 300 rooms just 40 are open to the public. The Blue Mosque one of the most magnificent mosques in the Muslim world it takes its name from the blue Iznik tiles which line its walls. Built during the reign of Sultan Ahmet, 1603-1617, with six minarets, which at the time was a cause of controversy as only Mecca, the holiest site in Islam also had six. There is a stunning vast central dome. The Grand Bazaar, also known as Covered Bazaar, Istanbul's famed emporium. The heart of the bazaar dates from the Ottoman conquest of 1456-61 and is a labyrinth of passageways and corridors with 64 streets, 3,000 shops, 22 entrances and 25,000 employees. It's tourists who shop and barter here rather than locals. There is a huge range of goods including jewelry, antiques, leather goods, ceramics, and of course the infamous carpets. Suleymaniye Mosque This mosque dominates the ancient city skyline, standing on the highest hill. The mosque was the crowning achievement of the Ottoman Suspur star chief architect, Mimar Sinan, who designed a vast number of buildings in Istanbul. 
commissioned by Suleiman the Magnificent and completed in 1557 when the Ottoman Empire was at its height, as an Islamic answer to the Byzantine Hagia Sophia. It's the interior which is most impressive with a vast central dome and tiered domes surrounding it. Eating, drinking. There is never a problem finding somewhere to eat and drink in Istanbul, from the street vendors selling grilled corn on the cob, simit, savory bread with sesame seeds, and fresh grilled fish on the harbor, to the cafes and restaurants on almost every corner. Low-cost traditional Turkish, mayhanes, tavernas, serve, mazes, small dishes of starters and dips usually cold. Boriks are another traditional Turkish snack, a savory pastry filled with anything from cheese or vegetables or meat. Dolmas are stuffed, yu sally peppers or vine leaves. And of course there are grilled meat kebabs. The district of Kumkapi on the Sea of Marmara, close to Sultanahmet is packed with lively harborside seafood restaurants and mayhanes. Traditional non-alcoholic drinking can be tea, herbal or straight, served in small tulip-shaped glasses, never with milk but always with sugar. Everyone you visit offers you a glass and it's considered rude to refuse. Turkish coffee is black and very strong in tiny cups. Turkish wines are fine, but wine is generally expensive in restaurants. The stronger stuff is reiki, an aniseed flavor clear spirit that turns cloudy when water is added. The centuries-old tradition of smoking apple-flavored tobacco through a nargali, a water pipe, is kept alive in coffee houses. One guidebook fixture is Erenler Nargali, one of the oldest and most famous located in an Ottoman building in Sultanahmet packed with students from the nearby university. Nargali smoking has fairly recently had a revival and become popular with young Istanbulites, male and female. The centuries-old tradition of smoking apple-flavored tobacco through a Nargali, a Hubble bubble water pipe, is kept alive in coffee houses. One guidebook fixture is Erenler Nargali, one of the oldest and most famous located in an Ottoman building in Sultanahmet, packed with students from the nearby university. Nargali smoking has fairly recently had a revival and become popular with young Istanbulites, male and female. Arts, Entertainment Turkish pop and rock is popular and can be heard on radio station Power FM and in bars and clubs. Istanbul will be one of three European cities of culture in 2010. Music Many of Istanbul's live music venues are on the back streets which run off Istiklal Jadesi in Beyoğlu. Belly dancing Beloved of package tourists A belly dancing and harem show can be booked at the Galata Tower. Belly dancing originated in Egypt rather than Turkey, but can be traced back to the days of the sultans, when both men and women danced for the sultan's entertainment. Male belly dancers still perform in Istanbul. Shopping, fashion. With dozens of independent stores, state-of-the-art shopping malls and bazaars and markets there is plenty of choice and competition. Big names are Mavi Jeans, the equivalent of Levi's, and Bayman department stores. Fashion is a big deal in Istanbul and Turkey is the fourth largest exporter of ready-make garments in the world. Turkish furniture designers such as Darren Design and Gaia and Gino are already stars. The rugs and kilims are ethically produced using environmentally friendly processes. Beyoğlu District Many American and European brands manufacture their clothing in Turkey and Istanbul now has a thriving market in seconds and overruns which can be bought at shops in Beyoğlu. Off Istiklal Jadesi are several pasas, covered arcades, stacked with knockdown clothes in bins or on rails. This is also the place to track down fake copies of well-known brands. Sport, Leisure Football Only one sport counts in Istanbul and that's football. There are three teams who play in the city, Besiktas, Fenerbahce and Galatasaray who dominate the Turkish league season August-May. Almost every male in Turkey supports one of the big Istanbul three no matter where he lives, with his local team coming second choice. Basketball is also popular. Turkish baths taking to the water in a Turkish bath, hamam, is a century-old tradition in Istanbul. Semberlida's hamami is right in the heart of the ancient quarter in Sultanahmet. It's been a bath since the 16th century and is now mostly visited by tourists rather than locals, but it's an architectural treasure. Full of marble domes, the baths were designed by Ottoman architect superstar Mimar Sinan. Media The daily English-language newspaper is Turkish Daily News and there is a monthly Turkish business world. The monthly timeout Istanbul is good for reviews and up-to-date listings. There is also a bi-monthly listings guide called Istanbul, The Guide. Radio The airwaves in the city are crammed with radio stations. 
stations usually offer Turkish or English language music. For dance and pop, there's Kiss FM, Metro FM or Power FM. For Turkish music, there's Kral FM, Lokum FM and Best FM. TV there are over 100 channels and Turkey has its own music channel, Power Turk, which plays exclusively Turkish music. There is also MTV Turkey. Practical stuff. Safety and scams pickpockets operate in the areas around Taksim and other busy tourist areas. Care should be taken with wallets, bags and mobile phones. If approached by anyone asking you for money, in particular young men, who can be glue or thinner addicts, be careful if you revoke them, don't be aggressive or shout or push them as this can provoke retaliation. Instead, either give them small change, without letting them see that you have more money, or refuse politely. Passports Your passport should be valid for at least six months on entry into Turkey. A visa is required for British nationals to enter Turkey which can be bought by British citizens at the airport on entry to Turkey for £10. Do this before you join the long queue for passport control otherwise you'll have to queue up twice. Local laws and customs, Turkey has strict laws against the use, possession or trafficking of illegal drugs. If you are convicted of any of these offenses, you can expect to receive a heavy fine or a prison sentence of 4 to 24 years. It is illegal not to carry some form of photographic ID in Turkey. It is therefore advisable to carry a photocopy of your passport with you at all times, storing the original in a safe place. Do not take photographs near military or official installations. Dress modestly if visiting a mosque or a religious shrine. Visitors should remove their shoes and women should cover their heads and arms, and not wear shorts or miniskirts. If offered a glass of tea, it is considered rude to refuse. It is an offense to insult the Turkish nation or the national flag, or to deface or tear up currency. The export of antiquities is prohibited and carries a prison sentence from 5 to 10 years. Tipping in cheaper restaurants it's not necessary to leave more than a few coins in the change plate. In an average restaurant although tipping is not compulsory, people leave around 5%. Water it is recommended that you drink bottled water. Money Turkey's currency is the Turkish lira. With a credit or debit card you can withdraw local currency from cash machines. Credit cards are widely accepted in hotels, restaurants and shops. Summers are relatively dry, but rain does occur all year round. During winter it is cold, wet and often snowy. Snowfalls tend to be heavy, but temperatures rarely drop as low as freezing point. Istanbul also tends to be a windy city. Working hours Government offices, 8.30 am to 12.30 pm, 1.30 pm to 5.30 pm, closed Saturday and Sundays. There are numerous private and state-owned city buses but because of the traffic jams in the city they can be slow and uncomfortable with services coming to a virtual halt at 11 pm. Buses are useful for heading up the Bosphor coast to Ortakoy. To travel from the European side to the Asian side it's best to travel by ferry. There are numerous docks along Emanonu Key. To travel to the shopping and business districts of Nisantasi, Edelir and Levant the best way is via the metro line that runs north from Taksim. There are two tramways on the European side. A quick, modern commuter tram runs from Kabatas, then over the Galata Bridge through Emanonu, Sultanahmet, Bayazid, for the Grand Bazaar, and onto outlying suburbs. Bus, metro, ferry and tram tickets are cheap and usually available near the main stops, either from a kiosk, all main bus and metro stops and ferry terminals or a private seller, who adds about 25% to the price. An Akbil, electronic token, is available for purchase in advance, with a small returnable deposit. This is valid for a number of journeys, slightly cheaper and more convenient for buses, ferries, the tunnel, and the metro. Taxis It's easy to find a yellow taxi, which can be hailed almost anywhere in the street. Insist on the meter always being used, the night rate, 2400-0600, is 50% more than the day rate, so visitors should check the correct rate is on the meter, Gundas, means day, and Geche, night, which should be digitally displayed. Alternatively, one light indicates the day meter and two lights the night meter. Taxis are cheap compared to European levels, with the day rate of TL 1.50 a mile. Sultanament to Taksim Square costs around TL 6. Taxi drivers can overcharge tourists, so if possible try to take a cab from an official stand or from outside a hotel. The Dolmas is a large, yellow shared minibus taxi, which runs a fixed short, circular route, 
such as Taxum Basictus with the starting points and final destination displayed in the window. With no set stops, flag down the driver to get on and shout to get off. For local journeys there is a fixed fare, which is around TL 1.50. There are smaller, blue minibus Dolmas, which do longer journeys within the city and suburbs and cram as many standing passengers as it can possibly fit. Payment is in cash, upon boarding, costing a little more than the bus, especially for longer journeys. Driving in the city hire cars are not recommended because of terrible traffic jams, worse driving and a shortage of parking. Istanbul is incredible. It's one of the most awe-inspiring cities we've been to thus far. Home to breathtaking architecture, delicious food, and some of the warmest, most genuinely hospitable people we've ever met on our travels, it's a city we would love to visit again and again. If you're looking to visit Istanbul for the first time, then I hope this comprehensive travel guide can help you plan your trip. It will tell you everything you need to know from where to stay, which sites to see, and of course, what food to eat. We enjoyed Istanbul so much that we could honestly see ourselves living there. Spend just one day in this captivating city and I won't be surprised if you feel the same way too.